informative, action-packed evening for you tonight. We've got um, some guidance on how the application process works for both schemes. Um, and then later on, we've got a panel with alumni who will share their experiences with you and also give you some insight on how to kind of ace your application. Um, so we're going to kick off with a short video. The network is about joining up those people who sit at home watching the TV with the reality of working in the industry and saying anybody can do it if you really want to. So driving diversity in, in the industry, new faces, new voices, new perspectives. You think you know what to expect and then you get here and you really don't. It's so crazy. It's exceeded every expectation I could have had. It's been fun, it's been inspiring. It's a really special opportunity for these people to make their first steps into broadcasting and digital. They've got four amazing days ahead of them. I think between the people that they're meeting and the courses that they're going to go on, they will get a real breadth of people's experience and stories and knowledge. You know what, it feels really exclusive, like it's some behind the scenes kind of hookup to get into the industry. It's intense, but you learn so much, you meet so many great people. Everyone is so friendly and, and they really want to help you, so it just inspires you even more. We're making a mini episode of Holby with the characters Dom and Essie, and it's been written and directed by our networkers. An amazing opportunity to practice skills that will eventually be your bread and butter. I've just come back from editing my first video ever. It's the most media thing I've ever done. It was absolutely mind-blowing. We've been teaching them how to make live TV. They learn all craft skills, so they get a really good set of skills by the end of their time, and everyone has a go at everything. It's the best experience you're going to have in a few days. You'll get a good um, grounding in so much television. And they're learning an awful lot. It's quite overwhelming, but they've really picked it up. A lot of people apply, and it is a process to get here. But if you get here, the whole experience is so amazing. The network offers kind of real-life situations and real-life deadlines. Deadlines are key. That's kind of what we want to get across, is make it as real-life and realistic as possible. Well, I think they're just a great combination of fun and hard work. I mean, you really have to uh, come here with some energy and some ambition. Yeah, you got the shots so. so If you think you could come up with the new hit show, if you kind of watch things and think, I could do it better than that, then I think this is a great place to kind of get your foot in the door. I mean, it sounds kind of cheesy, but it is a seal of quality, because what people can see is that you've been through a process of selection and that you have uh, beaten a lot of other people that have applied for quite a prestigious thing. I think these talent schemes are great because it gives people an opportunity to see that the industry is something they can achieve what they offer you and the opportunities that they're giving you I, nothing can beat it it's brilliant i still get emails from people who say two or three years on i went to the network it's transformed my career i went back with renewed vigor and now i'm doing something magical so it really can kick start what you want to do for the rest of your life hi um, so that's the video, um, which hopefully a lot of you, if you're applying for the network, will have seen. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk through the network first um, and then move on to Ones to Watch. But people that are applying for Ones to Watch, please do listen to the stuff about the network because there is a question that's relevant to how you interact with them. So don't just kind of switch off for 20 minutes and then come back in and be like, oh, what's this? Mm. Hmm. So the network. Hopefully this works, yes. So um, applications are open now and are going to close on Friday the 28th of April, which is the same across both schemes. Um, and in terms of what you get, um, so it's our entry level scheme. So we're aiming for people with sort of three months or less of paid TV experience. If you're sort of around there and you're really not sure whether you're too experienced, then just sort of drop us an email on the Talent Schemes email address and we can help you out and sort of have a look in your CV and stuff for you. Um, so you spend four days up in Edinburgh from the 22nd to the 25th um, with us and over those four days you'll spend that time doing uh, CV clinics, um, master classes, you'll meet lots of industry people and you'll also spend uh, two of the days doing the practical workshops which we sort of saw a lot of in the video there. Um, we're taking 60 people up to Edinburgh this year. Uh, in the past we've had 50 but we wanted to just make sure that we were getting as many great people as possible on the scheme so we've added an extra 10 in this year so even more chances to get on. And we also cover your food and accommodation as well as the scheme itself being free. So as long as you can get yourself up to Edinburgh, then sort of you're not really having to spend any money while you're up there, which is really great. 
Um, so in terms of what to expect, you will be meeting with talent managers, uh, heads of production on the CV clinics, and they'll be giving you lots of great career advice. Uh, we also have the practical sessions and workshops where you'll be working with people who made things like Hobby City, uh, Sky News, Let It Shine, and often because you know they're the real production crews that are taking a week off work to come and help with this, they are actively looking for people to kind of take on as well. So we've had loads of people kind of go on and work on Let It Shine and Hobby City and that kind of thing through the network, which is really great. Um, the whole thing culminates in a live show called The Network Live, which is kind of run like a magazine show, a bit like Blue Peter, um, and it, all the different bits feed into that, and it's really good fun. Um, loads of stuff will happen in it, it's very exciting. Um, and there's also loads of parties as part of the TV festival, which can be quite tiring, but I think everyone gets used to kind of burning the candle at both ends a little bit for those um, four days. So yeah, those are some of the companies that we work with and um, they're all really fantastic and they're all really invested in sort of working with new talent and we're really lucky to have them on board as part of the programme. Um, in terms of eligibility, so we're not expecting any qualifications, you don't have to have had a media degree or studied media, um, you know, we had someone who's now a doctor of, I think it's physics, uh, who was on this year, so, you know, people that work in TV really like you to know lots of other stuff, so don't feel like, oh, I don't know enough about TV to apply, we want you to apply. Um, if you are in full-time education at the moment, though, you just need to be in your final year and kind of ready to start working full-time um, once you've been on the scheme. There's no upper age limit, you just have to be over 18. Um, and if it's sort of, you know, you're wanting to start a second career, that is great too. Um, and yeah, no TV work experience needed, you just need to really love TV. And then after the network, um, you get access to uh, a year of mentoring. So that's with our Ones to Watch delegates. Um, and then you'll, we also have a placement scheme called Network at Work where we get sent uh, jobs and sort of internships and things that we send directly to our Network at Work pool because um, talent managers know that we go through such rigorous sort of application processes um, with everyone that's on the network that you know they're going to get access to really good people. So the road to the network which I feel like I should have a nice graphic for um, but so here we are at the start of um, application so March April uh, you can be completing your written or video application and we don't have a preference between either so you know, if you prefer to do a video application, just you talking into your front-facing camera on your phone, that is totally fine. Um, we just really want to hear what you have to say. We're not looking for anyone to have edited like this amazing mini masterpiece for two minutes. Though if you want to do that, that is also great. Um, then mid-May, uh, we'll uh, send out shortlist notifications for everyone that's kind of got through to the first round of assessment days, which is normally about sort of 250 to 300 people, depending on how many people apply. Um, um, I'll say this once and I'll say it again because um, it happens all the time. Please check your junk email for any emails to do with us because the number that go in there is astounding and I don't know why it still happens but it really does. So before you send us a panicked email, just check your junk folder. Um, so then through June we do our first round assessment days um, which take place regionally and in London. And then after those, on the 21st of July, we'll have a final assessment day uh, here at Google where we take sort of the top 80 to 100 people and whittle them down to the final 60. Um, and through all of those, it's things like sort of group work, pitching, there's a few interviews, but really we just want to kind of get to know you and see what you're all about, really. So, the questions. So, um, I think there's a lot of this information on the website, so don't feel like you have to scribble it all down and we'll pop it um, somewhere for you to find on the PowerPoint as well. But just to kind of emphasise the main things that we're looking for for all of these. So with the first question, we really just want to find out more about you and what you're going to bring to the world of TV. So, you know, anything that you do that shows how much you love television, we want to hear about if you do a blog or if you've got a cool Twitter account or a cool Instagram, tell us about it. And we also just want to kind of hear your story as well. So, you know, if you got really into TV because you spent your childhood with, uh, you know, inside with a heavy cold for a long time and you were sort of sat watching Arthur for years and started loving TV. That's the kind of thing that we want to hear. Um, you'll probably have a more interesting story than that, but I should try and think of a better one, not off the top of my head. Um, so, yeah, if TV's changed your life in any way, that's a good thing to tell us about. Um, then for question two, um, so come up with an idea for a new TV format. Um, we have in the past this was just to give us an idea for a TV program um, and it's certainly not that 
we're, we're not looking just for people that want to work in entertainment, but it's quite hard to get across a scripted idea in the amount of words that we give you, which is about 300, I think, uh, for this. So we just want you to kind of be really punchy about your idea. So it needs to be something where you can kind of go, like with Bake Off or Big Brother, there's like clear ideas there that you can kind of repeat across all of the different programmes. So it needs to be an idea that you can really explain well <coughs> and that we're going to understand really quickly. The reason that we don't like getting scripted ideas is because the best you can really do with something like a comedy is explain the plot and then just go, it will be funny. And we don't, you know, you're telling us, not showing us. Um, and really just think through all of the mechanics of what you're going to see on screen for the idea. So think about who's presenting it, where it's going to sit. So it might be on a traditional channel like BBC One or Channel Four, or it might be that you want to put it on an online only platform like BBC Three or Netflix or Amazon. Um, and also kind of think about the things that it's going up against as well. And if you can come up with a sort of like a snappy little elevator pitch at the beginning, that's really nice as well. So, you know, it might be that your idea is uh, robot war wars meets first dates and then expand. Um, but if you can really give us something that like captures our imagination right at the top, that's always really helpful in terms of marking. And then for question three, uh, tell us about a programme that you've either loved or hated in the last year and why. So you don't have to tell us about a programme that you loved. You really can tell us about a programme that you hate. You just need to have a good reason for it. We just really want to see your passion for TV here. So it might be that you thought, you know, the script was terrible or the camera work was really poor. Tell us about that and be really specific in terms of the technical details and what you think. Um, and it's entirely up to you what sort of programme you want to talk about. There isn't a set programme that we want you to say that you like or say that you didn't like, but as a recommendation, if you can think of something that you've watched this year that's maybe a little bit more kind of off the beaten track or a bit obscure, talk about that, because it's really nice for us to have someone write about a programme that we've never heard of before and then sort of go and read that and go, oh, maybe I'll seek that out. It's, that's really nice for us because it's hard to make an answer about Game of Thrones or Sherlock or Planet Earth stand out in quite the same way. And with all of these, um, there's some good general tips there. So check your spelling and grammar. Not everyone is a great speller, I know that, but everyone should have access to some sort of spell check if you can get access to the internet. So just make sure that you know it makes sense and that you've written it out in a way that we can understand. And if you're doing a written application, a video application, sorry, um, make sure that we can hear you and please make sure that the links work because there were three or four applications last year where they just hadn't checked the links and there was nothing for us to watch, so obviously they didn't get through. Um, and make sure that your contact details are correct and that you've used your personal email address rather than like a work one or a university or college one because if you move on, we're not going to have contact details for you anymore. Um, and hopefully sort of come through in the other answers, but really be creative and show us your personality. It should be an answer that only you could write. And when you're getting someone to check it for you, kind of get them to tell you if it sounds like your voice and that they can tell it was you that wrote it. And that's the end of the network section. Um, so if anyone has got any questions about the application questions or assessment days, now is a good time to ask. No? OK, cool. So we're going to, sorry, I sound like Wolf from W1A. Um, we're going to show the ones to watch video now, and then I'm going to come back and talk about ones to watch. The sessions they provide for us are amazing sessions. They put you in front of people which you wouldn't normally get a chance to be put in front of. I think we've got an absolutely awesome crew of people, people from different backgrounds, very talented. There are about five or six people who might identify with me and some other people who might identify with Jay and some other people who might get the most from this or that or the other session. You know, very important part of the Edinburgh Festival, I think. There's nothing else like it that you're going to be able to find out so much information in such a short amount of time. You get introduced to a whole host of people. You get really personal sessions, so 30 of us had an hour and a half with Jay Hunt. And that was just amazing. Vinay Patel, the writer, came in, who's a writer that I've always, I'd really admired and really want to work with at some point, so it was really great. Like, completely exhausting, but amazing. I've met some really, really nice people here. It's been amazing. You want to work with people that you enjoy working with. One to one time with one of my like, all time heroes, um, probably the person that influenced me to go into the industry. Almost like a little master class in a few minutes with them was just phenomenal. It sounds cheesy, but it's pretty inspirational just because 
Everyone who's been speaking to us is actually so honest. They know this scheme. They know that the scheme is full of people that are, are gonna go far in telly, hopefully. It's a brilliant one-off opportunity. It's, a sort of a, it's, a, it's kind of a privilege, isn't it? Yeah, I think if you're on this scheme, it, it means you're the best of the best of, you know, in your generation. And that is a really exciting sort of platform to build your career from. Um, cool, so ones to watch. So again, closed on Friday the 28th of April, same deadline as the network, and applications are open now. Um, so this is our mid-level scheme, which is for anyone with three plus years of experience in TV. Um, in the past, we had an upper limit of five years, which we've taken off this year, just because we want to get as many people through the scheme as we can, really. So if you know anyone that kind of has applied in the past and gone, oh, I can't do it anymore because I've reached the five years, let them know that now they can and we want them to apply. Um, so we take 30 delegates um, for, for ones to watch. Um, they can come from any area of the industry. So we get a lot of assistant producers, producer directors, but we also get schedulers, people that work in legal, people that work as production managers, um, people that work in marketing. So we really want to reflect kind of everything that goes on in the industry, not just people that are working in production. Uh, so the ones to watch spend uh, two days doing uh, sort of intimate masterclasses and sessions with people like Jay Hunt, people like Ben Frau, people like Carl Warner and Ash Taller, who you all saw in the video, and also some like practical development sessions as well. Um, and then you get a free pass to the Edinburgh TV Festival. So you get to kind of experience that as a delegate as well. And the two days that you spend just as the 30 ones to watch are sort of fairly prescriptive and you kind of do all the sessions together. But then when it gets to the three days of the TV Festival, you kind of get free reign to pick to do whatever you want with that really. Um, and you also get um, an industry mentor for 12 months as well. And we work really closely with the ones to watch to kind of find those mentors. So it can take a little bit of a while to get them um, assigned after you've been at the festival, but once you get them, you get 12 months with them. And they're always of a really sort of amazing caliber, sort of, you know, heads of channels, um, heads of development, that kind of thing. Um, so the road to ones to watch. So again, March, April, we're in the application period now, and ones to watch. We've added the video option in this year as well. So again, um, it can be something as simple as you talking into a front-facing camera. And as with the network, we don't have a preference for one type of application over the other. It's entirely up to you which type you prefer to do. Uh, again, we'll be shortlisting in mid-May for ones to watch. Uh, and then in early June, we do interviews. So we do them in London, Salford and Glasgow, um, depending on where people are based. And then uh, sort of beginning of July, we're also gonna do a finalist mixer for the sort of 100 or so people that get shortlisted to come and meet each other, come and meet some of our committee, come and meet us as well in sort of a slightly more relaxed environment than sitting across the table at an interview. And then, on the 21st of July, after the network's assessment day, um, we're going to have drinks afterwards uh, here at Google, and then the final 30 will kind of be unveiled and get to meet everyone, which will be really nice, hopefully. So, questions. Uh, so, tell us about a TV programme that's had a major impact, positive or negative, on you as a viewer in the past year, and why you feel so strongly about it. So, we don't want you to talk about necessarily a programme that you've worked on. Um, we want to hear about something that you've watched uh, because we, you know, we want people that like TV as well as working in TV. So kind of talk about something that you've seen that had a big impact on you and think critically about it as well. So you know um, what the wider impact of it was um, and how that kind of affected how you saw it. And as with the network, if you can pick something that's a little bit different, that's always helpful for that question as well. Uh, then for question two, uh, what are your immediate career goals um, and how do you think we can help with them? So I think this is a question that people often sort of struggle with initially when they're starting to apply because it is quite hard when you've been, you know, working your way in a job for a few years to think what the next step's going to be. But, you know, take a bit of time. You've got a few weeks until the deadlines. You can take a bit of time from now just to think, you know, where do I want to be? Do I want to move genres? Do I want to move sort of into a different kind of role? Do I just feel like I need more contacts and more knowledge about the industry to take the next step? If it's that kind of thing, that's something that we can help with. And just really try and pinpoint what it is that being on the scheme could do for you. So, you know, if you are currently working in entertainment, but you really want to work in docs, but you don't know anyone in that genre, have, maybe have a look through the programme from last year, 
see the kind of people that could have really helped with that. So, you know, we're not going to have exactly the same programme this year, but if you can look at maybe 2016's programme and go, oh, it would have been great to meet this person or this person because they could have given me some great advice about moving into that genre. And think about the other ones to watch as well because that's 29 peers that you're going to have like an amazing <coughs> connection with. And I know that there's at least two massive WhatsApp groups running from 2016 and 2015 that still get a lot of action. So it's, it's a real great peer network that you're going to get access to. So think about what you would draw from that as well because it might be that you know, you're know you freelance and you don't have that many other TV peers that you can draw on. So it's nice to have that support group as well. Uh, so question three, so this is the bit about the network that I was telling you about. Um, so think about a talk that you would give to the network, essentially. Like, we almost certainly won't make you give this talk. I'm going to reserve the right that we might. Um, but think about what you wish you'd known when you started out in TV and kind of really be sort of quite personal about it. As with all of these questions, it should be something that only you could have written. So don't just, you know, give a generic list of things that people should know like make the tea be nice like really think about things that you know relate to how you got into tv what your start was and things that you can draw from that um and yeah we, we just really want to sort of know about you but also know that you're happy nurturing new talent because we don't don't want meanies on the scheme we want nice nice nurturing people um because also we have to spend a lot of time with the ones to watch so we want people that we want to you know hang out with as well um, and then question four, um, so this is kind of our essay question. Um, is the television industry out of touch with its audience? Discuss with examples from your professional experience and your experience as a viewer. So again, there's no right or wrong answer for this question. You might think yes, you might think no. We're happy to hear either opinion as long as you've got plenty of thoughts to back it up with. Um, and you can touch on any particular area of TV here. So it might be fake news, it might be women, it might be um, you know use of digital platforms. Pick a subject that interests you and just sort of go with it really. Um, and we're really interested in your thoughts and what you think. So you can add in like the odd statistic from broadcast or something that you might have read that was interesting in like a Media Guardian article. But we'd much rather that we hear from you and your experience because that's the thing that we're marking on really um and that is all the questions so <coughs> there is all of our sort of social media handles um and yeah applications close 28th of april for both of the schemes has anyone got any questions about wanting to watch applications or interviews cool um sorry i'm aware i talk very fast um so I'm going to bring Campbell on now, and he's going to bring on the rest of our panel. So thanks very much, guys. Thanks, Holly. Holly doesn't speak too fast, I don't think. I, I got it all, but then I should know what it is. Um, so uh, we're going to do a little panel with some people who've been kind of where you are now. Um, and any, any order, so this looks fine. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and uh, their kind of recollections of their the kind of application process, um, what they kind of learned when they were on the scheme, and, and a little bit about what they're up to now. I'm going to do it in kind of chronological order. So I'm going to start with Suna, um, because Suna did the network in 2015. 2015, that's right. Yeah. All you're losing track of the years. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll just start with you, really. Can you remember how you sort of first found out about the scheme and that it existed? It's interesting you say that. I actually only got on the second time I applied. So the first time is a bit of a, a blur to me. But the second time I went to the Royal Television Society Careers Fair. And it was there that I got speaking to someone about um, what, the, what the scheme involved. And I'd ha I obviously had applied before. But um, I said to them, oh, but what chance do I have? You know, thousands of people apply to this and not many people get on. You know. And obviously, having applied the first time, I was thinking, oh, you know, what are the chances? But it just goes to show that if you keep trying every time you learn something new and every time you have that opportunity to talk to people that have been successful and to do more research to find out what it is that made, made them successful that time around. So um, obviously we didn't have the video application process that time, but we did the, um, the written application. Um, so yeah, I heard about it through, I'm, I'm going to say I heard about it through the careers fair because that's when it really stuck in my mind that actually I want to give this another go. 
Was there anything you did the second time you applied that was a little bit different from the first time, or everything? Everything. Everything yeah. I did that was better. I, I just I thought about my idea a lot more, did a lot more research into it, spoke to people about um, what they thought of my idea, pitched it to them. Um, I just just spoke to more people really, and um, people that had done the scheme before, people that had been to other networking events, and I think just watching more TV as well. I think before, when I first applied, I wasn't 100% sure I wanted to work in TV. And it was only the second time that I suddenly thought, I definitely want to. I had that hunger and that passion. Yeah. And, and that helped, obviously. I think that's what comes through. I think it's kind of, this isn't a scheme of like, oh, I'm thinking about TV, I'm thinking about some other stuff, maybe I'll do TV, maybe I won't. Um, we're looking for people like, it's gotta be TV. If it's not TV, I'm gonna go crazy. That's what we want. I think that's where you got to, hopefully, by, by that stage, um, when you apply for a second time. Um, I was gonna throw to Stephanie. So Stephanie is a very special, rare jewel in that Stephanie's done both schemes. Um, <coughs> she's done the double, which is, uh, <laughs> so she has some very specific insight, hopefully, that you can, you can share with us. Can you, um, remember how you found out about the network? Um, it was a very long time ago now. I think it was 2009 when I did the network. Um, I think it was a couple of, of my um, peers at university had done it before and had been raving about it and you know all the kind of experience they got and contacts and um, they were all encouraging us to apply. So that's how I heard about it. Um, similar story, I didn't get in the first time. I was on the reserve list. Um, and then, yeah, again, I kind of did loads more research. I'd finished university at that point, so I was a lot more hungry for getting a career. And um, yeah, I was second time lucky, which is great. Yeah. And do you remember, um, what did you take away from the experience up in Edinburgh in, in 2009? Um, it was just so exciting, the experience up there, because um, you know, I'd been to university, which was very academic. I'd done little bits of work experience, but kind of office-based, and I didn't really know what it was to work in television and to kind of have that contact with people in the industry, kind of get involved in development, getting involved in the kind of live show. Uh, really kind of, it gave you that excitement and kind of, um, you know, a bit more knowledge of what it's like to work in television and kind of made you realize this is definitely what you want to do and made you very excited for it. And just meeting um, all the other networkers and all the kind of uh, people that wanted to watch, which was called something else back then, I can't remember. Fast track. Fast track, track yeah. yeah. Um, just kind of made you feel like you weren't alone in your applications and kind of made you feel like, you know, there's a lot of people trying to get in and it's possible to get in, um, especially coming from, I was from, um, you know, town in the middle of nowhere up north, so I had no contacts in television at all, you know, besides sending kind of emails out to people asking for work experience, you know, I had no, um, you know, parent or kind of contacts in TV, so to get in through these kind of contacts, um, you know, made it feel like it was a real kind of tangible uh, career for me. Fantastic. So, you know, what do you remember from, particularly like from the peer network and all the people you met who were also on the network in your year? Um, I, well, I still remember all the people I met at my assessment day. Um, I think the networking begins really at, even at the assessment day. I was talking to people in my group, talking to other people. I started making a little sort of video record, audio recording and asking people how they were finding the day and their experiences. And I found that actually that calmed everyone's nerves because everyone there was so nervous. And that sort of broke the ice with everyone. And then I put it online afterwards and um, shared it with people that I'd met that day. And I'm still in contact with a lot of people, even who didn't get on the scheme. And a lot of them have then gone on to reapply or are considering applying again this year. Um, as for the network itself, the fact that it's such a, an amazingly strong alumni community once you're on the scheme. There's so many different events, not just for people living in London, people living in Scotland and other parts of, uh, of the UK. <laughs> And um, yeah, sometimes we meet up outside of network drinks as well, which is nice. And I actually heard about one of my latest jobs at the BBC on Let It Shine through someone who was on my year in the network. So you just never know what opportunities can open up to you from doing it. Yeah, and being in that group, people, it's very close that so people can kind of, if it's an opportunity <laughs> they either can't take up, maybe they sort of pass those things on. Um, hopefully you get from, from Stephanie and Sooner a sense of, like if you have applied before and, and you've not got through, like don't be disheartened. Like it, it, it's, it's a common experience for a lot of people that they don't get on their first time. So if, if you don't, or if you have before, you know, like do, do apply again. Um, we had someone once who applied for the network six times 
before he got on, but but he did get on and he's he's doing fantastically now. So that, I mean that's that's real perseverance. So hats, hats off to him. But you know, do don't don't give up. Um, so so Stephanie, when did you sort of start <coughs> thinking when you got to that stage in your career where you felt like, yeah, I think I think I'm ready for once to watch. And I think I could really get something out of it. When did you start sort of thinking that way? Yeah, it was when I was around kind of AP level, I started thinking about it. Uh, I'd seen some of my friends um, who were a little bit further ahead of me get on um, Wanted to Watch and get a lot of out of it. Uh, for the first couple of years, when I was in the three and four years, I was a bit like, oh, I'm not quite ready. Didn't want to be kind of one of the ones um, in there that weren't kind of good enough. But, you know, I shouldn't have thought that I should have gone for it. So I kind of ended up going, because when it was the three to five years, I ended up going around the five years to kind of feel yeah. secure that I was kind of ready for that. But, you know, as soon as I'd heard about it and knowing what the network was like and having something like that for a bit further on in your career was something that I was pretty excited about. How would you compare the sort of two experiences? Um, yeah, they were very similar in that you get to meet so many different interesting people and kind of having this kind of new kind of peer group um, but obviously uh, the ones to watch is kind of a you know more advanced version of that where um, just getting to kind of yeah have a session with Jay Hunt and people like that um, I think it was just kind of like one step further but I got kind of the same thing out of it but just at the right time in my career yeah so I'm going to bring in Susie and Mav, who've been sitting here very patiently, mm -hmm. as I sort of build chronologically. So um, Susie uh, did once to watch in 2014. Can you remember how you found out about it? I think I half know, but we'll ask anyway. Yeah, did you interview me? So you should know. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> yeah, there's that. Bit of it, but. No, um, <clears throat> so I think I heard about it through someone at work who had already done it, and then I applied. And I didn't get in, and I was obviously a bit like, what? Yeah. Why didn't I get in? Before it was there, it's because, it's it's because I wasn't good enough. Um, and then um, I, I applied again because a couple of people from work recommended me. And I had been sent an email. Um, I wasn't on the reserve list, but an email, sort of a notable mention, as in, yeah. like, maybe apply again next year. And then I got in that way. And it was great. It was really good fun. So um, the year uh, you did it was the first year that we sort of introduced the kind of interview stage. Can you... Can you remember what that was like? Yeah. Can you remember the um, interview view apart from me? Uh, it was, I can't remember her name. She was the head of the TV festival at the time. And she... Was it Mel Leach? I think so, yeah. A oh, God. Blonde, short blonde hair. It was terrifying. Oh, God, um, yeah. Well done. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Um, so you sound like you're scared of her as well. <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's an impressive woman. Yeah, she was. This has been recorded. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's on the record. Um, yeah, no, uh, she, I remember some of the questions, I think, if I, if I wasn't answering the question, which is quite frequent, um, she'd sort of keep putting it back so that I actually did uh, give you something yeah. to write down. Um, it was fine, I think. I thought it was, I think, I think it, if you're passionate about what you're doing, you should go in with actual opinions. And I think that sort of cuts through, not just going for ones to watch, it's just in general. If you want to work in TV, if you're, if you're going to be a bit meek about your opinion, you're probably not going to stand out. Um, maybe that's just my take on it. Everyone's looking at me blankly, so maybe not. Um, but the biggest thing I took from it was there was a guy who was going for an interview at the same time as me. And he was making terrible jokes the whole way down. And a lady called Rhiannon was taking us down. And he kept commenting on about how he'd been into a BBC building. And I was like, I work for the BBC. Um, but no. Yeah. <laughs> it was just a very odd like, situation. I think everyone was so nervous. But, but you, were, you were calm. So <coughs> I've sort of deliberately not mentioned what anybody on this panel oh, does. I'm keeping it mysterious as a kind of reveal at the end. But I'm going to have to like, tip it slightly uh, as I talk to, to Ravin. Because um, when we first met, you, you, you come from a perhaps a sort of a non-traditional background into sort of uh, BBC News and Mobile department. Uh, what, what had you been doing just before the BBC? So essentially working for a number of small news gathering startups. We used to verify social media content and provide it for big news broadcasters. Um, <clears throat> so it was, it was really weird coming to the Beeb and learning about this scheme and I completely freaked out because do you want me to go about how I learned about it? Is that yeah, no, do. Yeah, no, you have okay. saved me something. It's good. Um, yeah, I, I still remember it quite vividly. Yeah. Got an email from my boss going, apply for this, because he just sends me one word emails. He was just like, we'll see word emails, mm -hmm. apply for this. And I just replied back, WTF, no, what is this? And he's like, <laughs> he sends another email, apply for this. 
I was like, why? <laughs> He's because we want you to apply for it. Okay. Um, so I started reading up about it. Yeah. And I saw this TV thing and it just freaked me out completely. It's a scary just, word. Well, it's just because, I don't know, I work, in a, I work in a different environment. I mean, I work in digital, right? Um, and so anything you see on the news website, anything you see on the BBC News app, um, you know, on Facebook, these are the kind of platforms I consume every day. But actually, what's weird is the word TV is actually this as well, because people consume it in different ways. But I didn't think that when I got it. I'm a very, you know, I was a cynical journalist. I got yeah. this thing and I was just like, I'm not applying for this. What is this? Um, and the, the head of um, BBC News Mobile and Online, who's like my other boss, she came up to me, Fiona, she's great. And she said, oh, you've got to apply for this. And I said, why? She goes, well, you know, I did it 18 years ago. And I was like, huh? She goes, yeah, I was the one to watch 18 years ago. Got to apply for it. So I said, okay, fine, I'll, I'll apply. And the application form was just, like very daunting. I was reading on a Sunday and I remember just looking at it going, I'm not doing this. This is like, this is just too hard. I spent hours doing the application form. And then I think I came to an event and I think it was like this event, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, it was it the one we did at the yeah. Century Club? Yeah, kind of thing. yeah, yeah, and, then yeah. There was a, and there was a panel up there and everyone's talking about TV, TV, TV. And I was just sitting there going, oh, God, I, can't, I can't do this. I just can't do it. And then it was just finally having a conversation with Campbell. And I think yeah. I came up to him and said, it's been a great event. I, I just don't think I'm going to be able to apply for this. He's like, well, why? I go, well, I'm a journalist. This is really geared towards TV, isn't it? And he's like, no, 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 no. Absolutely not. And you sold it to me. Oh, good. In a you're a great oh, salesman. You're nice. a great salesman. Yeah. You sold it to me in such a way that you kind of made me feel welcome. Yeah. Um, and I thought, well, actually, no, this is, this, I think this is quite interesting. I think I could learn a lot. And maybe I could give something back as well. I'm not sure. Um, and uh, yeah, I applied and got in and. There you go. I think it's it very is, scared, but it's a tricky word, and I, I don't know if there's anyone out there who's kind of feeling the same way. A bit like, well, I don't know if what I do is like strictly sort of television, and it's a word I think that's evolved in the way that it's probably sort of ten years ago probably felt like a word that was going to die was on the way out, and I think sort of a lot of the new platforms have resuscitated what we mean by television. And in turn, I think as, as an organisation, we're really open and we try and embrace everything. The one thing I would say: uh, no presenters. Um, but we, 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 we are open to everyone else's um, kind of story and, and, and what they're kind of bringing in, into the mix. And I think that's, that's a really interesting, uh, interesting point. Um, can you remember when you were sort of saying that the, the application seemed daunting to you? Were there any particular questions on there that you were like, oh, I'll leave that one to the end. That, that, I don't know about that one. Yeah. Um, the future of Channel 4. Yeah, that's our rotating question. Luckily, we're not doing that one again. But okay. yeah. That scared me. Like... Um, I don't know if it was because it was from a BBC perspective. It just kind of, it just really scared me to think, what is what is the future of Channel 4? Am I writing something I shouldn't be writing? I'm not sure what I should be writing here. Um, and I thought maybe do I seek a second opinion on it, you know, to kind of open up my thoughts on it. I think I spent the longest on that question and I really thought about it. And I, what was interesting was the way I answered it, I think it came up um, with a Channel 4 exec at the festival and I mentioned it and we had a really good conversation about it. So you were ready. You really had a pre. I was ready with my business cards and I was yeah. ready and I did it. Um, that was just before I forget. If you're going to Edinburgh, have loads of business cards. That's all I'm going to say. Like have loads. You don't realise how many they just they yeah. just get used and get like, ready to get them as well. Yeah. as much as give them. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that's uh, so. Um, Susie, can you remember that first? Like that we do like a reception for the ones to watch right at the beginning of the festival. So that would have been the first time you would have met like the 29 other people. Yeah. What was that like? Because I know that not everyone in TV is like, hey, <laughs> cool, jazz hands, let's have fun, let's be big and crazy. It's such a targeted question, isn't it? It is a bit. <laughs> um, Susie and I um, had a talk a couple of days ago. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, a bit, it's so leading, it's unbelievable. But how was that experience for you? Um, so. It was very nice. There were there were some nice drinks going around. But when I'd arrived, I'd already done I think five to six days in Edinburgh, um, seeing shows. So I, I was kind of in need of a good night's sleep, which I didn't get obviously until after uh, we'd finished the ones to watch thing. Um, but yeah, everyone was quite jazz hands, uh, you know, because uh, obviously people are showboating uh, initially because it's a competitive environment. Everyone's done very well to be there. Um, don't love doing that. So um, I immediately formed alliances with other people who didn't like doing that. Um, and 
yeah, that, that was a reasonably substantial group because you assume everyone's going to be really extrovert, but actually, you know, you, a lot of people, if you're, if you're like doing stuff with scripts, stuff like that, you, you spend a lot of time being quite thoughtful. So maybe you don't want, you know, lots of like lads, Jaeger bombs, stuff like that, which they didn't do, to be fair, I'm being really unkind. Lads and Jaeger bombs, <laughs> yeah. I mean, we did do a little bit of that. Yeah. Um, but, you know, yeah, everyone's just trying to, like, the, the business card things, like, you kind of want to be ready with that. And I think I was a bit naive to that. I thought everyone's just going to turn up and be a bit like, oh, hey, it's really nice to meet you. Uh, so, you going anywhere after this? You know, that sort of thing. It's not that. It's like, what, what have you last worked on? Um, you know, who's your boss? That sort of stuff. And I was like, oh, my God, uh, I do know the answer to this, but I haven't prepared anything. Um, so... Some things never change, eh? <laughs> <laughs> um, and what would you say your kind of highlight of, of those days were? It was really interesting. We had a session with the head of Vice that was really interesting. Um, and again, like looking at different platforms, I think, you know, I'd had a lot of digital experience before that. And it was really uh, informative to sort of see how they were operating and, you know, didn't agree with everything you said, but interesting to see. And also Jay Hunt, which yeah, again, you ne no one ever gets to get face to face time really. And I think getting that exposure to commissioners, particularly because I was in, am I supposed to say what I? Uh, you can say what you do now. This uh, is a silly uh, conceit uh, uh, that doesn't really work. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Uh, so I was an AP <laughs> when. No, I, no, I screwed up. It was a silly one. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I was an AP um, when I was on to watch and. You know, exposure to those sort of high level people, I just didn't happen. And again, it probably would have been more beneficial for, for me if I were a little bit more, hey, I've got good ideas, listen to me. Uh, but I didn't do that. But um, I had really good mentoring afterwards. And, and, you know, you make the connections with the people. I saw in that video, you know, you will make connections with a few people who would be like, yeah, I'm going to keep in touch with you. And there'll be some people who, you know, you'll, you'll say, hey, have a drink with them. But maybe like professionally, you're not going to immediately nurture that. Yeah. which is what happened with me. So you probably got a sense at the end of the experience whether it's on the network or wants to watch, there's a bit of fatigue and possibly hangovers or not. Um, uh, but that's not the end of it. Um, there, there, there's more stuff to come. And we talked a little bit about mentoring here and you all have had mentors. Ravin, you're probably very much the beginning of your mentoring relationship. So you might not be able to talk about it in too much depth. But um, who, who are you partnered with? Ed Crick. Ed Crick, Ed's great. Ed's very honest. He's brilliant. And uh, the reason why it happened is because you guys brought him to the Ones to Watch yes. opening panel. And Ed is uh, an alumnus of the scheme as well, and he's uh, currently head of original programming at Red Bull, um, who are sort of moving, sort of increasing into that space. Yeah, it was, um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I, that was the first name I put down. We just connected at the festival as well. So I think the other thing about mentoring, if I can add this, is even though you get assigned someone when you're there, because you meet so many people and you exchange your business cards, it's not like you can't keep in contact with them and have them like as a side mentor. So I do have a couple of people that yeah. I actually email quite a bit and we actually get along very well as well. And it's like, it's good to have somebody on the side and then have the person that's assigned to you. But um, yeah, Ed's great. He's uh, we had a nice chat over Skype. We're gonna go for a beer soon. Good advice. You know, he asks me sometimes for advice, which is interesting, okay. so. Yeah. I think the best ones work when it is a two-way yeah. relationship yeah, I'm sure, definitely. yeah there's loads you can sort of teach him in return yeah uh stephanie who who's your mentor uh my mentor is aisha Raphael, who was head of documentaries at bbc he's now head of factual um so yeah she's been a really good mentor uh lots of really good advice a lot of things that i just haven't thought of at all um you know she's um you know been a director in in documentaries and drama and yeah, it's been great kind of putting in touch with people who probably wouldn't normally reply to your emails um, once you kind of uh, say that I should put you in touch, uh, they get back to you very quickly. Which yeah, is it always gets a secret weapon, isn't it? Yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> uh, Susie? Um, my mentor was Claire Zolkwa, who was the Commissioner for Entertainment and Comedy for ITV. Yes, and also um, did the scheme as well. Um, I can't remember when, but yeah, so we, we just, We'll be back for you in 10 years, so you can Great. do it for us forward. <laughs> or, you know, or probably sooner than that, to be fair. And I've just used the word sooner, sooner. <laughs> um, uh, who, who's, who's your mentor? Um, my mentor was Sam Palmer, and he is, I believe he's still an AP at Studio Land, but I need to get back in contact with him. But uh, I actually kept in contact and always found out where he was moving to, and then um, so sort of unintentionally stalked him to Studio Lambert. So I was there at the same time as him when I was a, a runner there. 
and um, I've been in contact with him, even though I wasn't sure uh, which part of TV I wanted to work in at that point. Uh, it was invaluable because it opened my eyes to development and I did actually pick the creative skills workshop in Edinburgh and if you've never done anything like development before I'd really recommend trying it because it gives you a chance to practice public speaking, pitching ideas um, as succinctly as possible and it gives you an option to do a bit of production because he'll go out on recce and he'll go out on shoots and, and, but he'll still be in the office as well so he's got the best of both worlds. So um, yeah, he was a great mentor to me and he still sometimes if I ask him, you know, do you know if anyone's lo looking for anyone, he puts me in contact with people that, um, that he knows in the development world, which is really good. Great. And just quickly, could you go through some of um, the things you've been doing since you've been on the network, some of the, some of the jobs you've had? Yeah, sure. So um, I went pretty much straight after the network. I went to Studio Lambert, was an office runner there for uh, seven months, and then I moved on to a, a holiday pilot show abroad. So that was my first really big challenge of being in three different locations, two of which were in Europe, and one of them was back in the UK. Uh, being part of one minute I was in a campsite, and the next minute I was on a beach. So it was really challenging experience. I was looking after kids one minute and then helping with the camera equipment and changing lenses the next. So um, another thing I realized through getting into that job was that um, welfare is another important part of TV. So I didn't know that before before I started at Lambert, that you can be part of a welfare team if there's kids involved or contestants involved. Um, and that's a really interesting area to work in, like working with contributors. And um, now I'm working at the BBC in the comedy and entertainment department. And in a few weeks, I'm going to be moving on to First Dates. So I'm really looking forward to it. Great. Do you ever see Susie around? I was saying, no, I never see you around, given up where I work. I have a little what, bit. BBC? Yeah. I'm yeah. in White City, where are you? Yeah, so am I. All oh, right, oh. save it for the dream. <laughs> yeah, that's, like, that's, that's lovely. So, <laughs> uh, so uh, Susie, this feels like a big reveal. Susie, what do you do for a living? Um, I'm a comedy producer. Um, I work for BBC Comedy. That's what I do. Yeah, <laughs> Check it out. Yeah. Uh, Stephanie, what are you up to at the moment? Um, at the moment, I'm at the BBC doing the new series of Junior Doctors. My last day is tomorrow. And then I'm going on to 24 hours in A&E. Mm. Right then. Um, <clears throat> I'm an assistant editor in News and Current Affairs and I run the audience engagement and innovation team. So we get to have lots of fun with, with platforms, which is quite cool. Exciting. I'm going to look at Holly for an indication of, do we have time for questions or? We've got time for one question. He's got a question. Mm. I, I can see. I can see a hand here. Hello. Hello. Hi. Yeah. Sorry, I can't stay for the drinks. Um, it was just really interesting to hear you bring that up about journalism because I wasn't expecting to hear that at all. I'm on an NCTJ journalism. All oh, right. Great. Um, I'm here for the network, and basically, yeah, it's, I find myself in that kind of place where. I'm in between the two a bit, and it was nice to hear that. I was just wondering if you could elaborate a little bit on that. Yeah, um, well, <clears throat> I think when I got there, I did feel slightly, I don't know, felt slightly out of place. Um, but only because I thought, I just saw this big TV starting constantly, and I was just thinking, oh God. And people would ask you, what kind of TV programs do you watch? I was like, well, not really. I, like, I live in news and current affairs. I don't think I watch TV. I think I'm just like too embedded in it. Okay, so do you Netflix after then? I was like, oh yeah, well that's TV, isn't it? I was like, oh yeah, actually, yeah, there is. And then you start rolling things off and you realise actually the same kind of principles that apply for journalism, and I guess digital journalism, is coming up with formats, coming up with ideas, coming up, coming up with new ways to storytell for new audiences because let's face it, people are moving away from news and moving towards different types of content. So I think for me, the learning curve being there was actually living amongst this world and then trying to apply it back to what I do day to day, and actually it's really worked. Um, I think the kind of connections I met with some of the other ones to watch who work in TV, you know, Holly mentioned this WhatsApp group, it's still going off like, it's been going off for the, like, some, like half of them are coming here tonight, and it's still going off, and the amount of things that I exchange, the amount of information that I exchange, it kind of makes you think differently. I think the other thing is also the contacts you make. 
Um, even though they might be traditionally TV, a lot of them used to be journalists that have moved into TV. So I think for me, it's a kind of an insight into what a future career could be from going to journalism to TV, or at the moment, it's maybe thinking about how I apply those principles to journalism. Great. So we are now going to move into the space you came into. We're going to have some drinks or not have drinks, that's fine. Um, but we've also got the panel will be around for a little bit, I think. So please do talk to them. Come and talk to me and Holly and Kate if you have any questions. Holly's got something that's going to supersede what I've just said. No, 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 it's fine. Okay. I'm just going to say, if you are staying for the drinks, can you go through the back door? And if you're leaving us here, can you go to this door here and we'll escort you downstairs so you don't come and roam around in the Google building. <laughs> Um, Security's pretty tight here, guys. Yeah, if you're on the list, you said you were going to leave. You're yeah, gonna if you didn't say you were staying for the drinks, you are leaving now. <laughs> um, I have names. Um, but can we just take this minute just to say thank you to our panellists as well? Because I have no manners. So. Yeah,